Now the phrase F is continuous is often abbreviated by F is capital C superscript zero. So next we'll prove a new theorem. Let x, y, and z be topological spaces. The constant function f mapping x into y defined by f of x is the constant y sub naught where y sub naught is a specific element in the uh, space y is continuous and if z is a subspace of the space x then the inclusion function f mapping z into x defined by f of z is equal to z is continuous. Now recall that in lecture 16 we proved as a lemma that in the absence of an a priori topology where z is a subset of the space x, the inclusion function induces the subspace topology on z. Now if the function f mapping the space x into the space y and the function g mapping the space y into the space z are both continuous, then the composition g of f, which is a map from the space x into the space z, is continuous. Now if the function f from x into y is continuous and z is a subspace of the space y such that the entire range of the function f is, is contained in the subspace z, then the function g which maps x into z. Here notice that we are restricting the uh, codomain of the function f defined by f of x is equal to g of x is continuous. If the function f from x into y is continuous and the space y is a subspace of z, then the function g mapping x into z obtained by extending the range or codomain of the function f is continuous.
if the collection of sets u sub j for j in some indexing set j is an open covering of the space x, then the function f mapping x into y is continuous if and only if the restricted functions restricting the domain of the function f to the subset u sub j mapping u sub j into the space y for every is continuous for every index j. Now recall that in uh, lecture 16 as a corollary we proved that given a subspace of the space x the restricted function mapping that subspace into the space y is continuous if the function f mapping x into y is continuous. Here we're extending this to uh, several open subsets and if the SpaceX is a discrete space then the function f mapping the discrete space x into any arbitrary topological space y is continuous. So proof first statement let V be open in the space Y, then if the singleton containing the constant Y sub naught is a subset of V, then the inverse image of the open set V is the entire set X. Otherwise, the inverse image of the open set V is the empty set in either case, the inverse image of the set V is open in the space X, and hence the constant function mapping X into Y is continuous. So second statement, let the set U be open in the space X, then the inverse image under the map F of the set U is the intersection of U with Z, which is open in the subspace Z and hence the inclusion function mapping z into x is continuous. Third statement, let the set v be open in the space z, then as the function g mapping y into z is continuous, the inverse image under the map G of the set V is open in the space Y and as the map F from the space X into the space Y is continuous the inverse image under the map F of the inverse image under the map G of the set B is open in the space X now since the inverse image under the map F of the inverse image under the map G of the set V is the inverse image under the composition G of F of the map correction of the set V, we have that the composition G of F mapping X into Z is continuous.
So forward statement. Let V be open in the space Z. Then as Z is a subspace of the space Y, V is equal to U intersected with Z where U is open in the space Y. So the inverse image of the set V under the map G is the inverse image under the map G of U intersected with Z. And this is the same as the inverse, inverse image under the map G of U intersected with the inverse image under the map G of the set Z. And so this is the inverse image under the map G of the set U intersected with the set X, and since the inverse image of the set U under the map G is a subset of X, this is equal to the inverse image of the set U under the map G, and this is equal to the inverse image of the set U under the map F, since G and F agree. So as the function F mapping X into Y, is continuous. The inverse image of the set U under the map F, which is equal to the inverse image under the map G of the set V, is open in the space X. And hence the function G mapping X into Z, which is a restriction of the codomain is continuous. So fifth statement. Notice that the function g is the composition of a function h with the function f where the map h mapping y into z is the inclusion function now since the function h and the function f are both continuous the function g which is the composition of h and f is also continuous by statement 3 so sixth statement suppose that the function f mapping x into y is continuous. Notice that we can regard each of the sets u sub j as subspaces of the space x and hence the restricted function mapping u sub j into the space y is continuous for every index j. So conversely, suppose that the restricted function mapping u sub j into the space y is continuous for every index j. Notice that this implies that each 
of the sets u sub j are subspaces of the space x. So let v be open in the space y. Then the inverse image under the restricted map of the set V is the intersection of the inverse image of the set V under the map F with the set U sub J. Now the inverse image of the set V under the map F is the same as the intersection of the entire set X with the inverse image of the set V under the map F as this is a subset of the set X. Now the entire set is equal to its open cover. And so we have that the inverse image of the set V under the map F is the union of the open sets U sub J intersected with the inverse image of the set V. And this is the same as the union of the intersection of the sets U sub J with the inverse image of the set V. And this is the union of the inverse image under the restricted function of the set V for each of the uh, indices J. Now since the restricted function is continuous for every index j, the inverse image of the set v under the map, the restricted map, is open in the space u sub j for every index j. Now as the space u sub j is a subspace, an open subspace of x, we have that u sub j is open in the space x for every index j. And so the inverse image under the restricted map of the set v is open in the space X for every index J. And hence, the inverse image of the set V under the map F, which is a union of open sets in the space X, is open in the space X. And thus the function f mapping x into y is continuous. So seventh statement. Let v be open in the space y. Then the inverse image of the set v under the map f is a subset of the set x and thus is open in the discrete topology on the space X and hence the function F mapping the discrete space X into any arbitrary topological space Y is continuous.